this is going to be the video on painting this little um, beach scene. It's a real simple and fast little um, project. This is on a one by six pine board cut into a square. So actually it's like five and a half by five and a half inches. And here's an old one I'm just going to recover to do. Um, this is one I had done my pumpkin painting tutorial on or one of them. And I'm going to cover it with white paint and let it dry. I'll probably take a couple coats to cover up this um, design. Typically I start with a dark coat to cover the design and then the white coat so you don't have any of the different shadings of the different colors. So to begin with, to uh, make this surface opaque, or um, all one color I should say, I'm going to use, this is True Blue, uh, Folk Art American, uh, Folk Art, Plaid Folk Art paint, and I'm just going to go over it with that color and cover it completely. Now the texture from the crackling underneath is still going to come through and that's fine. And they have um, small canvases in 6 inch, 4 inch and 6 inch I think. And you can buy those instead of using these little wood tiles that I've cut. Um, I like painting on wood because I like the texture and the different things I can do with it. But um, I'm going to be starting some small canvases for the gallery I'm a part of. So I need to start getting some of those. So there we have it. It's all blacked out, so to speak. And it'll be one color. So when I go over it with the white, it won't be so difficult to get the coverage I need. If you have the different colors, for some reason it shows through the white and um, just it shows up. So it messes with your painting. So. There you have that. Now it's dried, all dried, and I'm going to come in with some white. Could be any of the craft paints, the quality ones. This is Americana Snow or Titanium White. Uh, folk Art Wicker White could work well too, if that's what you have. And I'm just going to coat it. I have this is a three quarter inch brush. Um, but whatever brush you want to do it, it's wiggling and making noise. So I'm going to just coat this as thickly as possible without leaving too much of a ridge with the paint. And I will probably need to come back in with another coat. Or this might work just fine since all of it's going to be covered. Um, why I go over it with the white rather than just painting directly on the dark blue is with the uh, acrylic paints. Um, a dark background will dull the color and a white background will make them seem much brighter and I prefer <clears throat> a bright color. So there is that coat of white um, and once it's dry I'll determine whether or not I want to go over it with another. Now I have my sample in here that I did and we're going to start with the sky. And I just have my palette here. This is True Blue Folk Art, Amer uh, Folk Art. and this is uh, Americana Deco Art Titanium White or the Folk Art Wicker White will work just as well. And I'm going to, let me get this back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to kind of double load. I'm not real precise with it. And I'm just going to just start bringing in the colors. And I go back and I'll load my brush frequently. You can get a little bit more white if you want. And I just have both colors on my brush. I'm not too particular about the shading yet. And I bring it on down. Some, um, maybe a third, maybe more of the way. And you'll see there's the streaks in it, which mimics the clouds. If you wanted a few more, you could add a bit more white and just kind of blend it in here and there. I'm not going to do big puffy clouds. They're just going to be the streaky 
clouds. Now we want the top part to be a little bit darker. You know how the sky darkens as it goes up higher. And some people have it maybe on the horizon darkening, but for this one I had done the higher up on the thing, on the painting. So now we're going to go into, I'm going to pinch out my brush. Let me get a rag. So as we're going into the same color, basically, I just take my brush, pinch it in a rag and get some of the paint out. Now we're going just into the true blue. Get some paint on there. And I'm going to try to get the horizon straight. The other one I noticed it was crooked, but we're eyeballing this. So here is the horizon of the water. I got kind of a gloppy edge there that I don't want. And then I'm going to keep on bringing it down. Now I can add a little bit of touch of white on a corner. We want it darker than the sky because it's going to be the ocean. And I was just keeping it to a few colors, um, but you could, you're welcome to mix in a more of an aqua or whatever to make the ocean seem more blue-green. Also in this tutorial there is green for the grasses and you could mix that in if you wanted some green in there. And there's also black. So you could mix in white and black and make some gray if you wanted. And you can just kind of streak like you did the sky. We're not trying to do anything too um, specific. We're just kind of getting the look. So you can do that, play around with it. So it looks like there's kind of a little bit of waves there. And then we will get some of our next colors and I'll put those out on the palette and I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, I have the next color for the sand on my palette. This is called Deco Art Americana Bleached Sand and it's a piece of sea sponge and you can get these at craft stores and what have you and I'm wadding it into a little bit of a ball and it's slightly damp. I have um, rinsed it out because I used it for something else and uh, dried it on a towel, but it's still slightly damp. And now I'm just going to dab it into my bleach sand paint color. And I'm going to kind of make some little hills on the side. And then the middle part. Looks like I only need to get more on my palette. Now remember, each time you do this, it's not ever going to turn out the same. And it looks like I got a little too high with that. So I can, to fix that, I can come in with a rag. And I can wipe it down. I could wet it if I want, but it'll take off some of the blue and I could come back in and I could um, do more blue. I mean, bring the blue back down since it's a light color on that edge. But that is that part of the sand. And then like to add the shadows to give it a little dimension. My burnt umbers at the tail end so it's not going to come out there we got a little touch now i would double load with more bleach sand and the burnt umber on my sponge so you'll see there's the burnt the bleach sand and the burnt umber also i could show you another way to do this other than a sponge and that's with a scruffy brush which they work really well we get a small scruffy brush well, not a small one, but the regular size. It's not a big one either. So here's a scruffy brush. And I would double load it. See, one side, one side, and I pounce it. Now, I don't want it to be that dark, so I need to pounce it up into the light to lighten that. And I will just kind of go along 
the edge and I'm going to blend that in so don't be panicked over it being kind of stark against it. And you kind of blend a little bit in there. <clears throat> now I wipe out my brush. I keep losing my rag. It keeps falling on the floor. I wipe out the brush. I dip into more of the bleached sand. And then I just kind of pounce it on there. There's still going to be a little bit of that burnt umber in there so I can kind of lean the brush where it's mostly the bleached sand coming off. And you just... And if you get too much of one color, like if you get too much burnt umber in there, just go right back over it with the bleached sand. And, and if you want a bit of highlight, you can add a bit of white. Touch of white to your brush. And you can kind of highlight the top of the sand dune or whatever. And that gives it kind of some texture. One's kind of coming down over in front of the other. So, okay, so there you have your sand. Now we would, I'm going to come back in and fix this blue here. So I want it to come down a little bit more there and then we will put in the grass. So I'm going to fix my water a little bit there. And I've got the two colors in my brush again. And I'm just going to kind of bring the water back down into this area here. And no two of doing this pattern over and over again, you'll never get two exactly the same. But I'm happy with that, and I will come and bring in a little bit more sand right here so you have the sandy edge, and then I'll go on to my grass. Now on my palette, I have some just a touch of Thicket. This is a folk art color, and I'm just dipping the corner of my brush in it and then I'm going to just stay on the corner. I'm not going to use the whole thing and I'm just going to flick up some grasses. Very light touch. Flick up. You can come down into the sand. Load again. And I'll do some more grass after I've put in the fence post, but I'm putting up the grasses right here. If this was a lake instead of ocean, which it could very well be, this could be like tulies if you wanted to make them a little bit longer and put little brown hot dog shapes on them. And you can have cattails. And if you wanted to vary the grass color, you could dip your brush in some of the sand color and add a little bit of light to it or into the burnt umber. Touch the corner in the burnt umber and give it a little touch of brown. You know, grasses aren't just green on the beach. Add a little bit of brown. That sand is coming through. And you just kind of eyeball it where you think a little bit of grass would be coming up. More green, less brown. Keep it light. And see that coming out of this little hillside coming down here. So there you have some grasses. And then I'll rinse out my brush. And this is a number 12 flat brush. It's a Donna Dewberry, Don, Dewberry U Pro. And it's a pretty good brush. Now I'm just dipping in, loading my brush in some of the burnt umber for now. And I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want these fence posts. Now you could use, if you wanted to use another brush, like a number 
four. And I'm just giving it kind of a shape there. I'm getting it cut. That one's kind of big, but like with a number four brush, I would just make a street, just a line down. It's a narrower brush, but I was trying to keep this tutorial with to as few brushes as possible. Or if you wanted to, you could use a liner brush and it'd just be more lines coming down. Let me see if I could show you how to do it with a liner. Okay, here's a liner. And let's see if, for me it's harder to do, so we'll see how I even can manage this. So we'll do some fence posts over here. Kind of draw them on with your paintbrush. And then fill in. It's very doable. Tedious for me, but doable. The grass is still a bit wet, so normally I would let it dry between different colors or areas, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And there you have your fence posts. Now I would come in and I could do this with the liner. We'll let that dry and then we can shadow and highlight it, the fence post. But I got my liner brush and I'm going into the thicket. And it's kind of, since I water my brush, it's inky. So I pull it to a point and I'll pull up some of the grass by the fence posts. And if I want to add some sand color to it so it's a lighter green. Didn't really, wasn't really noticeable there. But you can do some tufts out of the fence post bottom. And then you can come in and mix a little bit of sand and a little bit of burnt umber on your brush. Make kind of a taupey tan. I don't know. And then you can kind of shadow. No, nope, that's too, too light. Get a little bit darker. Shadow underneath. Still too light. Oh, what's going on there? Get me some brown. Shadow in the sand from the fence posts. And you could shadow under these grass tufts. Kind of sets them down in the sand. Just lightly. And if something's a little off, you can go back in and put more sand over top of it. So we'll highlight the fence post. I'm deciding whether I want to do it with white. I guess I could do it with white. Highlight, just kind of streak it down. I got too much in there. Streak it down the side of the fence post. It's still a little bit wet, so it's going to kind of blend in, and that's fine. You want it to kind of blend in. Now on that side, that fence post isn't dark enough. The blue is showing through. So I will go back into the burnt umber. And I will fill that in. And then I will use a small amount of black. And we'll put in the wire. And I didn't bother rinsing my brush. I just got some black. And I'm trying. I want this the wire to be really thin. So, and I'm going to kind of make it look like it's coming around the fence post. You see, I notice how I maybe I should zoom in for you. I start at a point. I come out and come in. It's almost like a 
from here at upside down J. And I bring it over to this one, and then I do the same thing. You make it come around, drag it over to this one, running out. Make sure you're just on the tip. And then you're going to make that one come around that one. And the same along the bottom. Make it come around. Then you make it come around. Give it a little bit of shape there. And if you want some wire hanging down, just let the wire hang down. And the same here. You just come around over to this one. Over to this one. And then you eyeball it and see if there's any things you want to fix. I'm not liking this grass down here. It's too straight. It needs to have a little curl to it. Like and the same some of these. They need a little top point. I don't know if it's standing out well enough, or let me see, this grass up here I think needs a little bit darker underneath shadowing. And get some of that burnt umber in my brush, mix it with a little bit of the sand. And I'm just kind of scooching it along underneath there. If you want to make it like look like more like a hill or you just kind of add little touches of shadowing and oops I'm sorry hope you saw that I'm good traveling along here here I did this grass under here did a little hill there put some up there and if you want to blend it in you can rub it with your finger and if you overdo it, go back over it with the bleach sand and pretty much, oh, I didn't do the birds. Sorry about that. So the seagulls, here you can see the little seagulls in that one. And again, you're going to be doing, I got a little bit of black in my liner tip, a little white, kind of blends, it's not totally blended. And I just do the little shape and there you have your seascape or whatever you want to call it and that's it let it dry and sign your work i hope you enjoyed that this is something i failed to mention as we were going along if you're doing it on those small canvases um, that are gallery wrapped and stapled on the back or what have you, you would paint along the edges. When you're doing the sky, you paint along here, along here, same with the ocean part. You would paint the blue there and the sand here and here. And then you could set it anywhere and it's finished. Um, or you can come along and finish it off with a flat brush. This is my number 12. And do like black or whatever color just along the edges like a trim and a lot of times I will put a um, Verithane finish on that first so if I do get any on the side like that it'll just wipe off better and not absorb in not absorbed in because I didn't have it, a finish on it but that's an alternative to um, painting you're painting along the sides as well as the front so there you have it <laughs>